I am pleased to announce the publication of my audiobook, The Computational Theory of Mind, available at audible.com. The widespread belief that the mind is a computer embodies a failure to distinguish between computers on the one hand and information processing systems on the other. Minds are information processing systems, but they are not computers. Please enjoy the following promotional excerpt from the audiobook itself, professionally narrated by Dalton Tyler. 1.1. What is CTM? According to CTM, to think is to compute. Thoughts are computations. A computation is a formal inference. So CTM is the view that any instance of thought is identical with the making of a formal inference. But what is a formal inference? To qualify as formal, a case of reasoning must be identical with a reaction on the part of some creature or other to symbolic inputs. But not all such reactions qualify as cases of formal reasoning. Only those reactions so qualify that aren't to any degree driven by knowledge of the meanings of the symbol tokens in question and are driven entirely by a sensitivity to their forms. So CTM is the contention that thoughts consist of responses to symbol tokens that are driven entirely by the formal properties of those tokens and therefore embody no knowledge of what those symbol tokens mean. In section 1.2, we'll give some examples of such responses, thereby eliminating any obscurity from the statement just made. Why advocate CTM? Two reasons. First, CTM, if correct, solves the mind-body problem. When you add two numbers, you are ipso facto thinking. Computers presumably add numbers. Computers presumably compute. Therefore, computers, when adding numbers, are ipso facto thinking. We know how a computer's software is related to its hardware. So CTM, if correct, solves the mind-body problem. In other words, CTM, if correct, makes it clear how brains are responsible for the mental activity that they mediate. Second, CTM, if correct, solves the tracking problem, or so CTM advocates say, and so we'll momentarily assume. Brain activity, though clearly 100% physics-driven, is also logic-driven, or, in any case, logic-consistent, at least to the extent that it mediates rational thought. So, to the extent that it's constitutive of rational thought, brain activity though governed by descriptive laws, embodies sensitivity to prescriptive laws. Where such activity is concerned, the descriptive tracks the prescriptive. Nothing that is obeying the laws of physics is, in virtue of that fact, doing anything that can be evaluated. That can be described as correct or valid or false. In moving hither as opposed to thither, the billiard ball isn't doing anything right or wrong, valid or invalid. And so it would seem to follow, nothing that can be so described could be constituted by brain activity. But brain activity does constitute activity that can be so described. CTM supposedly solves this problem. It's possible to create an environment in which there occur symbol tokens whose logical properties are hewed to their physical properties in such a way that, within that environment, Symbol tokens occur in sequences that are consistent with the requirements of logic. In fact, not only is it possible to create such environments, we routinely do create them and employ them. We call them computers. So it would seem that CTM, if correct, explains how activity that falls within the scope of physics can, at the same time, embody a sensitivity to the demands of logic and, more generally, of normativity.